please welcome on stage actor producer investor entrepreneur alia bhat where did the interest in entrepreneurship come from So actually, I'll start off by saying hello to my lovely, lovely members of the media from Delhi, Delhi walo. Kya hal hai aaj? Ha, bahut serious baat hai aurey aaj abhi. Idhar bahut important baat aurey. And actually, I want to start off by saying I'm sure I think 60% of the people in the room are confused as to why I'm here as an entrepreneur. So you're going to say that Alia, you brand endorse karti hai. Entrepreneur kahan se aaya? Maximum invest kya hoga? Question mark to hai na? है ना देखा आई एम सो कनेक्टेड टू देम सो आई नो एक्जैक्टली हाउ दे थिंकिंग बट टू बी वेरी ऑनेस्ट इवन आई समटाइम्स थिंक टू माय सेल्फ के ओ ओके यू आर एक्चुअली एन ऑन्टरप्रेन्योर सो लेट्स गो बैक एज टू वेयर दिस स्टार्टेड एंड वेयर दिस केम फ्रॉम इन 2015 और 2016 आई रिमेंबर कि मेरे दिमाग में ना एक कीड़ा बैठ गया कि मुझे कुछ क्रिएट करना है ओके इट्स एज सिंपल इट वाज द राइज ऑफ ऑल दीस and i'm saying speaking in the most simple language because i'm an audience i'm a consumer so there's also apps coming out so every time i was coming up with an idea i also want to create an app literally did i know that a you need a lot of money uh, a clear idea and um, somebody to back that idea so then um, i remember okay fine i would call up my um, team and say oh no, i have this idea why don't we create something like this why don't we do this something and they would just humor me and hear me out and i don't think i'm ever going to stop ideating about you know what i would like to create but basically what i was looking for at that time i remember and it comes from a very vulnerable place as a person i never wanted to put all my eggs in one basket which is make actor who and i work very hard on a daily basis but kal ka kya pata you know who knows where i'm going to be tomorrow so i wanted to secure myself as a person and as a professional um but obviously when i sat down to actually ideating about what i want to create usually you would consider an actor to do like a fashion brand some clothes a limited edition collection of something which is fine in its place and it's great but when i actually got down to thinking about do you need another fashion label there is so much there's so much quantity there's so much uh, so many options available so why would anybody come for a product just because my name is is associated to it so i didn't want it to be something that just because it's associated to my name it's a, it's a brand that should stand tall on its own so i looked for the gap in the market at that time us time pe there were not as many home grown sustainable children's clothing brands at that time and that's where i said okay this is the story and parallelly us time pe i was also thinking of putting out a story of a little girl and her dog ed and this little girl and her dog go on these adventures they talk to trees and animals and everything and they're on the advent on this adventure to save the planet so from that story came the story of ed mama which is my own children's wear clothing brand mera venture hai mera capital hai mera vision hai. i am the sole investor and founder of ed mama so that's the information that i want to put out there first fabulous i did not know the story of ed by the way so would it be fair to say amir yeah, that you know we were we were talking about it earlier that you start with an idea and then you keep peeling the layers and you realize that you want to make some changes and you know what you ultimately end up launching or bringing to life it sometimes we are a little different at least it was in my case um you know we started a it's funny you you mentioned there are enough clothing brands cuz we we're trying to sell t-shirts way back then uh one more clothing brand uh but but what we it started with on paper and what we ultimately launched were actually I want to say radically different, but they were fairly different. So, did Edema also go through a phase of you started with a version of it, and then you kept iterating, and what we see today is actually different from where you started. So, the idea was always to create a sustainable children's clothing brand, right? So, in terms of its sourcing, in terms of its material, in terms of the method used from the stage of manufacturing, everything. 
But um, I launch, I mean, we, uh, it, it's like, you know, break a leg situation. We launched right in the heart of the pandemic in 2020. So that was the first thing that I had to change my path. Ajay sir was talking about how you need to move with the time, be able to hybrid the moment and learn from what's coming at you as opposed to what you need to give back. I launched a spring summer collection in autumn winter because I was sitting on inventory for six months but there was no option but to go ahead with, uh, ahead with it because that would be a major loss. Luckily, we decided to launch online talking about technology if it was not for that i don't i didn't know at that time when we were going to go to a store we didn't know how long it was going to be that i would be able to give people a live experience of touching and feeling the clothes so that was the first challenge that was thrown at me of course initially edamama started off just children but then there was a time i remember back in 2022 I was um, expecting a child and I looked at my wardrobe and there were no clothes for me that I wanted to wear and I was very nervous about how my style was going to evolve over the next couple of months. So then I started making little changes to my wardrobe and then comes the maternity collection of Edamama. I didn't expect that as well, that was not something that I planned. And then subsequently came infants and all of that. So now we have zero to four, zero to fourteen. And my plan now to go forward with Edamama is to in, include personal care, uh, sustainable diapers, sustainable toys, and of course the storytelling being the center of it. Um, that's also going to start soon because I know that today as a mom, one of the favorite, my most precious things is when I read a book to my daughter. Um, or I sing a song to her. So eventually, my dream maybe in the beginning was not to create an Edamama universe, but that's my plan is to create an Edamama universe that, where, where you feel very connected to nature, very connected to your planet, and you just celebrate the child within you. Uh, it, it actually does feel like you laid out what the 10 year vision for Edamama is right now. <laughs> oh, did I do that? <laughs> that's did. another thing I should mention. I know nothing about business. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I disagree. Have you had any of you folks, you know, I found it particularly refreshing to hear Alia talk about, I was sitting on inventory, I need to do something about it. Uh, inventory being one challenge, but I'm sure there would have been, you know, your fair set of challenges, you know, because we having to launch it in the pandemic being one and so on and so forth. Absolutely. And actually one of the things that I didn't mention is because we are a truly homegrown Indian brand, vocal for local, all our material is sourced and manufactured within India. That actually helped us in the middle of the pandemic that we were not scrambling and running from pillar to post to make and keep the collection going. So for two years, we were able to keep our head above water because of that. Wow. How do you, when you look back now on your journey over the last couple of years on Mama, how would you turn the challenges that you would have, some, I'm sure you have surmounted into, what would you offer as advice from those learning experiences for entrepreneurs? Number one, I don't have all the answers. That's the most important thing. I am very grateful that I was in a position, number one, that I could self-invest, that I then and that then I and I and that I could also appoint a team of ninjas, I call them. A cute, small, sweet team, because you're a bootstrap company, but the team really led me through all these challenging times and all the question marks. I know story, I know marketing, I know I like this visual, I don't like that visual. I know, okay, I initially did not want to do denim because I said, you know, it's not really uh, favorable to the planet environment. So we had to then look at the way the collection did. We were getting feedback, can you do denims? Can you do jeans? So we had to look at another alternative. So we did green denims where, you know, when you wash them, they do not leave an excess residue, etc., etc. So this is all feedback, listening to the consumer and listening to the team. So one of my utmost, my, my, my first and foremost advice to any entrepreneur or anyone on the verge of creation or the top of creation is listen to everyone. Suno sabki karo apni, but suno. Agar suno ge nahi toh samaj bhi nahi aega ki ho kya hai. Um, to be a good leader, you have to actually really rely a lot on your team because leading in my opinion, um, happens with the team being your backbone. Absolutely, absolutely. 
You know, earlier you mentioned, and you mentioned it a couple of times, you talked about sustainability. And it's something that at Amazon we are actually we feel very strongly about sustainability. It's actually one of our leadership principles, in fact. And all the brands, you know, Edamama and the brands that you've invested in, uh, like Fool, there's, there is an element of sustainability that seeps across all of them. What is it about sustainability that you feel so strongly about? And is that one of the X factors, if I may, that you look for when you think of ideas worth pursuing or investing? It comes from very simple upbringing and understanding of dharti ma hoti hai. And we have to be very, very sensitive towards the planet that we're living in. And of course, there will be a couple of things here and there that you don't, maybe you miss, un, miss, you know, you miss a step here or you miss a step there. But if you're consciously just thinking about it, if it, is it good for is it good for the planet? Is it good for the planet? You will automatically make small decisions, and you can't you can't be all rounding all the time. Otherwise, of course, you can sit and you can point a hundred things as to what's wrong with what you're doing. But even if you're doing just five things right, and I'm talking about even as a person, an individual in your day to day life, it goes a very long way. So the sustainability aspect came from the fact that also you want to I wanted I wanted to nurture in children a love for nature build a generation of young planeteers. So even, even with the words that we have on our t-shirts and all, it's not like stay cool, stay calm, it's, you know, um, be kind, um, you know, get dirty, like in the mud. It's just, it's all about being very close to Earth. And um, of course, you have to put practical practices in place as well. I think sustainable as a word, the word sustainable, sustainability, we overuse it sometimes. So you have to really, in terms of certification, we we, we, we take all the boxes in terms of being a completely certified sustainable brand from our, like I said, from our buttons not being plastic, from our fabrics, we use excess fabric and we create, you know, all the trims we create, portlies out of it. Every, every uh, garment comes with a seed. You know, so you can plant that seed and, and you know and, and and have a plant along with some clothes. So it's a small these little little things that you kind of seep into the brand ideology, but that comes from me as a person. Since you mentioned pool, of course I love the story of pool, but not only because of the fact that they are clearing waste and reducing waste, but also they're doing that whilst giving various jobs to women locally. So I love how each story ties into the other. For me, it's not about the money, as, as as I know people say that a lot, but genuinely, that is not what attracts me to any brand to invest in or to support um, or to create in this aspect. It is the story. I'm a storyteller first, and it's always the story. Amazing. Uh, have you been able to link you know, one vocation of you know bringing stories to life to even your entrepreneurial approach? What, according to you, Alia, does it take to create a successful startup? Successful startup, right? For the creation of taking an idea and creating it, and I think Professor Sood was talking about it earlier, we, we have a lot of them where the start happens, right? Uh, and if I may, I think by any yardstick, Edamama has actually crossed that and belted beyond. So what does it take to go from just starting to scaling? Well, I think, that, I mean, again, that's a lot of pressure for me to just suddenly give that extreme advice. But see, from my experience, number one for me was finding the gap in the market. Uh, if there's a gap in your life, there will be a gap in the other people's lives as well. Sitting here, um, you know, just under a board of technology and innovation, I really can't be sitting on a high horse because technologically and innovation-wise, I've really not done that. So I'm sure they know what they're doing. But one of the things that I think is fabulous about a show like Mission Startup and you know with um, Ajay sir's contribution and support what you're saying about having um, mentors lead the way um, really being able to of course number one believe in your dream do not be afraid of failing but that's very easy to say when you know you're not putting in your own money so when there is money on the table you're very afraid of failing but sometimes it takes time so you have to see it through. 
Um, but that's where that mentor is so important. That's where the support system really comes into play because very often I'm continuously second guessing myself because I, I tell myself I know nothing about business. I know nothing about numbers. You're throwing these terminologies at me and they make no sense to me. And I'm telling you, I'm telling them, explain it to me in an elevator pitch. In four lines, if it makes sense to you, then it will make sense to me. Like if you ask me what your what your next film Rocky or Rani Ki Prem Kahani is about and I can't tell you and it takes me about 65 minutes to explain it to you. Yeah. You'll be like, I'd rather go watch the film. But if I tell you, no, it's a film about two families and two cultures and not just loving each other, but also loving each other's families. Simple, cool. I know if I want to buy a ticket to that movie or not. Same thing comes to a brand like Edamama or any other brand or any other innovation. If I can tell you in one second what it does and what it will do or in a couple of sentences, you're sold eventually. We don't have time. We need to know it immediately. So you have to have that confidence in that and someone giving you that confidence, saying that you've got something, just keep going and it will come and helping you from all those little, little, little speed bumps and sometimes massive ones. I forgot the question, I've just gone uh, digress. Totally, but, I, I think uh, the audience is adequately enthralled. Like, at least I can, I can. I want to ask a question. So do you count a large group of mentors who have helped you along this, along this journey of scaling at a mama? You know, how did you, how, how did you find them? Mentors, advisors, like, where, where should, where should budding entrepreneurs be looking for? Obviously, Mission Startup is obviously a great platform, but how did you find them? Like-minded people, people who have started business, like done something in that space before, maybe not succeeded at it for X, Y, Z reason. Like again, speaking about someone, uh, my business head, if I, uh, not talking too much about her journey, but we found her um, because she had her little a little brand that she had done on her own, um, selling exclusively on a platform, um, and we really liked the fact that she went out there and did it on her own, and felt that she would have a lot to add to a brand like Edamama and she's somebody that I deeply rely on. I, I trust her blindly and sometimes I say, if you feel like it's what we should do, I don't think about it, but if you feel like what we should do, we will do it. Um, so just looking actually not where people have succeeded, sometimes looking where people have failed, but there was something there, you know? And sometimes I always feel, and somebody said this recently to me, it's actually was said by a cricketer, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you should walk into a room and actually look for the person who's 7 on 10 and not 10 on 10. Because the 7 on 10 has that extra fee that they really need to give. Interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I was suddenly reminded of what my grades in school were. And they weren't as good as 7 on 10. <laughs> uh, talking about mission startup. You know, with your experience of having been an entrepreneur and having been an investor too, uh, and obviously having been a phenomenal, phenomenal, uh, you know, entertaining uh, actor, what, what, what do you, what do you expect Mission Startup to be about? Because it needs to bring in a combination of being entertaining for viewers, inspirational, uh, and also ultimately provide a behind-the-scenes look to into the world of startups. You're talking about going to going and supporting innovation at the grassroot level. I'm expected to be wowed, surprised, edge of my seat, really being so um, proud of where our country is at today. And I'm expecting to see a lot of honesty and a lot of vulnerability. And I would like to see that because it's not easy. And at the end of the day, this is a competition you know, Mission Startup is a competition. Um, I'm guessing one person eventually at the end of the season or end of whatever. But I know that the other, the 10 teams, right? What I know is one will win, but the other nine are not going to go unnoticed. Absolutely, absolutely. So there is so much exposure and so much, such a beautiful platform for these people. And right, everyone rightfully said, inspiring, incentivizing, you'll have people sitting at home watching the show and maybe resonating, saying, yes, this is me, this is what I thought, this is what I felt, oh, that's the mistake that I made. And even if they don't land up coming on Mission Startup, they will go into their own mission and maybe do something, start something there. Uh, that's interesting. <laughs> Last question. So you are a producer, an actor, I'm sure, a very busy personal life, a mom. 
an entrepreneur, an investor, uh, and I'm sure I missed out a bunch of them. Uh, how do you manage it all? What's your secret to work-life balance? I think everyone over here, everyone has a balance that they need to maintain, right? You have to maintain your family, you have to maintain your work life, you have to maintain your children. Ghar sambhalna hai, khud ko sambhalna hai, health sambhalna hai, sab kuch sambhalna hai. But we do it because such is life and you need to just keep moving. You know, put one step in front of the other, not think about what you're not doing right. Think about how you've gotten through the day with a smile on your face. And even if you have a couple of tears rolling down, it's okay because such is life. So one of the most important things is, I don't have all the answers. Sometimes I do not manage, but I know what my top priorities are. Of course, now, you know, my daughter being at the top of the mountain. Um, but you just have to, that I'm sounding like some motivational speaker right now, but I'm just saying you just have to keep going and not thinking about how you're doing or how well you're doing or how badly you're doing and, you know, stop yourself every now and then to give yourself a pat on your back if you want, but just keep going, such is life. Just keep going, such is life. I think that's a t-shirt slogan, I don't know. And I'll try it, uh, but thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you so much for being here. Thank you for your candor. And thank you for what I'm certain is going to be some little very interesting pearls of wisdom for entrepreneurs everywhere. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me.